Hello students and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. In this video I'm trying a black background with uh, bright writing on it instead of the normal whiteboard. I see this black background being used by some of the other online educational channels. So please let me know in the comments if you prefer the black background or if you would like me to go back to the standard whiteboard. Today we are looking at multiplexing and demultiplexing. The multiplexing and demultiplexing are important communications concepts. As you can see there, we have a number of data streams coming in, one, two, three, four, and five in the diagram. And we have an electronic switch that quickly switches between the various streams directing one or other of the streams to the channel. This is a simple model of how the internet actually works. It's called time division multiplexing, which means that the actual line that's carrying the data has splices of everybody's data on it, and it, the person's data just depends on the particular time. So, very quickly, there is electronic switching going on that decides which of the possible input streams is going to be going to the single channel at any one point in time. Now, of course, we have the opposite of this, where we have the single channel coming in and we want to route it to several different places. So our demultiplexing, which is the opposite of our multiplexing, is going to take a channel and it's going to split the information and send some of it to different parts. Now, clearly you can see from the way the switches are drawn that only one feed can work at a time. So it's either going to be coming out on one, two, three, four, or five, or else the input is only going to be going into the channel from either one, two, three, four, or five at any one point in time. So really what we're talking about is switching, electronic switching. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to draw block diagrams that show the two circuits. And this is what you will use for your logic diagrams when you're not concerned with the inside part. When we're considering using these in circuits, we are going to draw them as just square blocks. And we're only interested in the input and output connections. If you need to know what's inside the multiplexer or the demultiplexer, then that would be a separate diagram that would only come into play if we were actually designing them. Okay, now we're going to look at the decoder, which is an integral part of both the multiplexer and the demultiplexer. The decoder is what makes the selection of which input to send to the output or where to send the common input in the case of the demultiplexer. As you can see, we have four AND gates and we have the top one wired here you can see that it is wired directly to the A and B. So when we have a one on the A and the B, the top gate will switch on. So that will happen when we have binary three on A and B. At the bottom you can see we are using inverters on the A and B line. So when both A and B are zero, the bottom gate will be active and that will allow the signal to pass through the bottom gate. 
we can use combinations of A and A bar, B and B bar, to satisfy the other two conditions so that when the A and B selects from 0 to 3, first the bottom gate will be active, then they will go up 1, 2, and 3 at the top. So we're going to replicate another of the identical decoders on the other side of our board because as we said to you before, both the multiplexer and the demultiplexer are based on the decoders. The decoders have to be used as the electronic switches which we showed you in the last slide. Okay, now if we connect, as shown in the pink, we connect it up so that we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 inputs going to those respective gates, and then we have them all connected into an OR gate, we will be able to activate either the 0, the 1, or the 2, or the 3 line to the output, depending on which gate turns on. So the AND gates are acting, only one can turn on at a time to allow the information to pass from the input to the output. Now for the other part of it, the demultiplexer, we have the one common input or channel applied to all of the gates, but only one will be activated at a time depending on the A, B select lines, so that the signal will be routed either to the output 0, 1, 2, or 3. The use of colors and the way it is drawn, you should be able to understand quite easily what is going on. So now we have identified the select lines, and all remains to do is to box them in, and label them multiplexer and demultiplexer, and you get the complete idea. You can rewind the slider and study it if you need to. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to produce truth tables for the multiplexer and the demultiplexer. All truth tables have the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. So in the case of the multiplexer, we have actually six inputs, the 0, 1, 2, and 3, plus the select lines, and only one output. In the case of the demultiplexer, we have only three input lines, the in and the select lines, but we have four outputs for that circuit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in the tables so that you may see for yourself how it's done. Now in the case of the multiplexer, notice we're making generous use of the X sign. The X sign means that we do not care whether that input is a 0 or a 1. Or more specifically, whether it's a 0 or a 1, it cannot affect the output. So we always put an X when the output will not change if that input is either a 0 or a 1. Now the table should be fairly self-explanatory, but as you can see, once the input is a zero in the case of the demultiplexer, we will have no output on any of the lines, no matter what the select lines are selecting. This is a function of the AND gate. The zero on the input will block all of the AND gates and we will get a complete line of zeros. 
So that most clearly expl explains the use of the X's in that one. And over here in this one, you will see that once the select lines have selected the zero input, we really don't care what is on all the other inputs, which is very fortunate because it shortens our table with so many inputs. If we had to worry about the zeros and ones on all of them, we would have a much longer table. Hopefully this has been a good insight, not only into multiplexers, demultiplexers, but also into the construction of truth tables in general. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you will know when they come. And also please check out the playlist for other electronics videos which might be useful to you.